Hey everyone, so tonight I want to discuss a book that I have loved since way back when I was in high school and I got my hands on it. Um, and that is Manson, well, Manson and Neil Strauss's book, The Long Hard Road Out of Hell. This is easily, I mean, whether it's all actual factual or if it's mostly invented fiction, this is a fucking wild read. I mean, when Manson, see, all the markings at the top of this are all the fucked up shit that I've decided to knock off, to mark off, sorry, so that when people ask me what the book's like, I can say, well, hey, check this out, check this out, and they're like, oh my god. When he was a kid, apparently Manson found an aborted fetus in a coffee can. Now, Manson's a creative guy, so I don't know how much of this book, even though 100% of this book is, is supposed to be fact, or fact-based, because this is more his story, you know, his long, hard road um, out of hell and into earthly fame and fortune. Um, I don't know what's real and I don't know what he's invented because there are parts of this book that are so completely disturbing. And he's a fucked up dude, so I wouldn't be surprised if they were true. But then on the flip side, he's a really creative guy, so I wouldn't be surprised if they were completely untrue. No matter what, this is a compelling read. This is this is so absorbing. This will fucking swallow you up until you're done because you can't not wait to find out what happens next. Just what other fucked up situation Man's gonna, Manson Sawyer's going to find himself in. This is the book where uh, he claims that him and Reznor, Trent, of course, from the Nine Inch Nails, burned off some chick's pubic hairs. And Reznor flipped out when the book was released back in 98. I remember that. He said that that never happened. And he said that he was appalled that Manson would even include him on anything that horrific. And so did it happen? You know, didn't it happen? I don't know. Manson's always done a fairly good job of blurring the lines of reality and fiction, but I don't know. I mean, there's also, dude, when he talks about his being trapped under the stairs, which of course would later become lyrics, um, for, I can't remember what song he discusses, uh, his grandfather's trains. It's off the Antichrist Superstar. He's under the stairs and he's, he's watching his grandfather mess with his trains. Well, oh fuck, what song? Was that Antichrist Superstar? Oh, that's going to bother me now until I remember what song those lyrics are from. It doesn't matter. Um. He ends up trapped under the stairs in his grandparents' basement when his grandfather comes downstairs. And his grandfather has a hole in his throat, I believe, from smoking. And so he's always carrying, like, a rag around to kind of wipe the phlegm off as he's, like, coughing and whatnot. And so when Manson's under the stairs, his grandfather comes down and he takes his clothes off. And it's revealed that he wears women's underwear. And he masturbates, like, in front of Manson. And, of course, he doesn't know Manson's there because Manson's just a kid. And I could see that really having a negative effect on someone. Again, assuming that it's true. I mean, you're watching your grandfather jack off while he's like wiping phlegm from the hole in his throat, wearing a bra. I mean, that's, that's going to have an effect on your, you know, your, your, your emotional growth. It has to, right? And he talks about how backstage for a while there, he was tying up fans and torturing them. And this one kid tells a story when he's got him all like bondaged up backstage and he's like dangling from whatever. How the kid and his girlfriend, the girlfriend was hooking her way cross country to get money to come to Manson's concert when some trucker just grabs her and drives off into the middle of the night and the boyfriend like breaks down crying while he's tied up backstage at one of Manson's shows telling the story about how some potential serial killer grabbed his girlfriend and just disappeared with her. And again... It's a really disturbing and sort of engaging story that initially, if you, if you take this book, if you let this book exist just on the surface, you take it at face value and everything in it is true, that's fucked up. Even if it's fictitious, that's still fucked up. But if this is at least mostly 100% fact, this is the most fucked up book in existence. And there's so many things in here. I don't even know, like... You'd think, like, I mean, it's just so, everything about this book, I do have to say, I also really like the design work. 
that was tossed in. It's very um, Antichrist Superstar era Manson. And it's like... Him and Twiggy were doing so many drugs, apparently, during the writing of the Antichrist Superstar that they were able to c communicate through thought. Again, I don't know if that's supposed to be taken with a grain of salt or not, but this is one hell of a read. I mean, and I absolutely love that in the middle there's full color photos. It's a nice touch when a book includes full color photos. And it's just so, it's just so weird. He's got awkward chapters on, like, this chapter is on homosexuality, and the list at the bottom of the page is uh, that you're gay. If you meet any of the qualifications below, you are gay. If you get someone else's sperm on you, if you've ever owned a Smiths album, um, if you get hard while sucking another guy's dick, well, yeah, you know what? If you've got another guy's dick in your mouth, fuck, I hope you're gay, because, you know, otherwise. Um, if you've ever worn a beret, Jesus Christ, if you wear a beret, apparently you're gay. Um... If your name is Richard and you go by Dick, then you're gay. If you fuck a girl who likes the Smiths, then you're gay. And this, if you do anything spiritual, um, if you've ever had a haircut like Morrissey, okay, he's really blasting the Smiths here. And I hate the Smiths, so I couldn't agree more with this. If you've ever had a haircut while a Morrissey or Smiths album was playing in the room, um... If you've ever put band-aids on your nipples as a fashion statement. Um, if you're not thinking about tits right now. I have to say I don't really think about boobs all that much. So I guess by Manson's standards, or at least 90s Manson's standards, I guess I'm kind of gay. Um, and that's pretty much... That's pretty much the whole book. It's just... It's really well written. That's, of course, Neil Strauss as well. Manson Manson is a very solid writer, but we never really got to see his literary sense put on full display because his novel, Hollywood, at least as of 2022, has never been published. And with all the rape allegations and all the shit, it's probably done. I doubt we'll ever see that book. But it would be nice because I don't know how much of this he wrote or how much he wrote and then Neil Strauss cleaned up because Neil Strauss is sort of like, ghostwriting it, so to speak. But nonetheless, this is one disgustingly engrossing read. Definitely check this out. I'm telling you, it is so worthwhile. This thing is so badass. It is so completely fucked up. But yeah, so I am going to go. So thank you so much for hanging out with me for a little over eight minutes while I discussed Marilyn Manson's book, The Long Hard Road Out of Hell, while Manson and Neil Strauss if you liked this review, like always, don't forget to do something nice for somebody. And I just don't think wearing a beret makes you gay. I think it takes a little more than that. You know, seeing as how you're born the way you're born. Yeah. Have a good night. I just wanted to say thank you for making it through the entire video. I really appreciate it. And I'm going to remind everyone one more time, even though I've probably already done this in the video that you just watched, to please click the like button as well as the subscribe button because it helps this channel grow. And thank you for hitting like and subscribe. And we will see you guys really soon.